So what is LTC, Lunar Coordinated Time? Um, just the, it's UTC, but for the moon, right? Um, especially as uh, whatever it's defined as by the US government, by the world government, by popular convention. Um, and why do we need it? What is it? How? Right? We need it because a shared reference frame is absolutely necessary uh, for coordination, cooperation or otherwise. You need to know, um, if you need to know where something is, uh, you know, velocity over time. If you need to communicate with somebody, and, and um, that depends on radio signals, right? If you need um, to plan something in advance, a moment in time is critical for that as well, right? Um, in my opinion, all stakeholders that use time, which is everyone, uh, should, be, should have a stake in how a time scale or any standardization or anything like that is uh, conceived and, and implemented, so they should be at least at the table. Um, so what is proposed uh, already for LTC is um, a shared reference frame used uh, to communicate or, or translate the time between different entities. And I'm using uh, specific language here with reference frame. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. The reference frame that is used should be relevant to the people that use it. And this comes into play with the, to answer the question, why not just use, use UTC? Why not just use an Earth-centric or human-centric time scale? Because it's not relevant for robots that are um, you know, hundreds of thousands of kilometers away um, that are right next to each other. Things like that. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit more. And the how, I have some suggestions here. These are my ideas. This is TBD. This is uh, me proposing way, actionable things that we can do to advance toward um, you know, addressing the why and the what in a near-term way. So um, some just fundamentals here. I'm gonna, uh, this is an assumption that I'm going to just uh, address and not discuss. <laughs> um, and that's accurate timing is mission critical for autonomous systems. Accurate being on the order of uh, keeping uh, the time <laughs> uh, to tens of nanoseconds for days on end. Um, this is critical for scheduling, collision avoidance, logistics, security, and so on and so forth. The moon, when you're, if you bring an ideal clock to the moon and you compare it with an ideal clock at Earth, I, as in forget technological uh, flaws, these are perfect according to physics, the time represented on both of those clocks will drift apart from each other by 56 microseconds per day, per Earth day. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot. It's got the little mu in front, right? That's usually small. But microseconds, um, especially in accumulation of this much, is equivalent to about 16 kilometers of navigation error if you were to use GPS, if you had this much error accumulate. So it's a big deal. Um, this is driven mostly by the speed of light, because light goes real fast. So little bits of time multiplied by uh, e times, or to 10 times, 10 to the eighth um, adds up quick. Um, but also computers think fast, and they're moving uh, objects. This, I knew it was going to be hard to see. Hopefully, it's a little bit easier uh, <laughs> than it is for me. But I just want to give a sense of scale, and I'll point out some things here. Um, this little emoji here is the Earth. I hope you guys recognize that one. This blue line, labeled LEO, has a tiny little two-pixel speck. That's a satellite and how close it is to the Earth. A geosatellite, geo uh, geosynchronous orbit, where the GPS satellites are, are, what, 36,000 kilometers away? And then here's the moon. This is, to scale, as close as I could get with emojis, right? But um, I actually did do math and put them as close as I could reasonably get. There's a little purple orbit over here, and that's an example of something orbiting the moon. Big difference here, right? And uh, light has to travel all that distance, and even at the speed of light, um, it adds up. So an Earth system, uh, we got a little green zone over here. There's a little radio uh, antenna on the Earth. And if you want to, um, that could be your phone, that could be a ground station. You get the whole view of the sky, and you can use a satellite from over here on the left, over here on the right. There's a big angular difference between them. 
and um, it's reasonably close, all the math works out, and you can get your GPS to get you to the conference on time, if presuming traffic allows, right? <laughs> Um, also, it's pretty close, so attenuation is fine. The signal is strong. LEO systems benefit from the same things. I work on satellites every day, mission operations at Planet Labs, and uh, those satellites know where they are because they just ask you GPS. Because GPS is in a higher orbit, you get the same uh, things over here. But if you're at the moon, some of these things start to break down. Signal uh, attenuation, uh, the, I'm going way too slow here. At the moon, it's far away. The, all these things are earth-facing, and the, the angle, it, it just doesn't work out, right? If you uh, bring your own system, you're fine for yourself, but you can't coordinate. So why don't we just take Bikini Bottom and move it somewhere else? And that's where uh, Intuitive Machines, um, that's where Crescent, RIP, apparently, uh, Mass and Space Systems and things, that's, that's yeah, oh, sorry. Um, so that's, that's one thing, but Albert Einstein has something to say about this, and that's relativity is a bitch. Um, general relativity means that in an absolute sense, if you're in a deep gravity well, uh, time, the passage of time is warped here. This is a little animation from Wikipedia that's supposed to move. And if you're moving fast, observing someone else makes, means their clock uh, passes at different rates. And even ideal uh, clocks drift apart, and it becomes significant, especially on these scales. So can we use UTC, can we use the Barry Central Coordinate Time, which is our deep space standard for the, a clock, an imaginary clock at the center of the solar system? Well, yes, but actually no. Um, we, I'll, we, we can talk about this later after the talk. So the White House said, OK, lunar coordinated time. Um, and scientists got to work figuring out how that would work. Some scientists got together and actually did the math and said, we can actually calculate relativity. Um, we, this is how to make it so. Um, we can actually calculate the impact of relativity and track how they, those two things drift, how time of the moon drifts with respect to Earth. And the White House said, make it so. But uh, the wordplay here is a complication is the little thing on the watch that tells things other than the actual time. A complication here is that um, if you have fractured PNT systems, um, you have conf friction at best, conflict at worst, if everyone keeps track of their own time. So we have to be in this together. And luckily, these, are, these slides are quick. First thing to do, put a good clock on your spacecraft. Good clock these days is a couple thousand dollars. Second thing is establish a public service that's good enough. Cheap, shitty, but there. If you want something better, if it's mission critical for you to have high fidelity, pay for it. These things can coexist. And the next thing is, in order for these things to be public, in order for people to have a seat at the table and participate and influence these things that are important and critical for every single lunar mission, we have to embrace transparent systems and paradigms to keep everyone accountable and to actually distribute the time. So if you, want, if you have time for seconds, I thought of that pun this morning and I'm really proud of it. Uh, we have some links here. Um, one is more casual um, uh, at, in response to the lunar coordinated time proposal um, that I wrote with Christopher Button from uh, uh, Rocket Lab, and the next one is the white paper that delves into analogies from Antarctica and uh, colonialism, uh, like things that missteps that humanity has taken, uh, successes, and so on, and then proposes some ideas for how to do it. So I think I'm way over time, but do we have questions? We have time for one question. Yes. <laughs> if we're colonizing the solar system, why? If we're colonizing a solar system, why don't we use a barycentric time? There are problems with the barycentric uh, coordinated time. Uh, backspace isn't working here. Let's see. And if I can, if you can read small text, that would be great. Um, a few things are, I mentioned. It's not relevant for someone at the moon um, because if, like you and me, we're this far apart and we need to synchronize our clocks and make sure, like I know how far apart you are, or something or other, um, to convert it account for relativity to get to the barycentric coordinated time um, and then convert it all the way back. And that's the distance to the sun and back. You know, that's, that's even harder to do and ha incurs more error uh, than um, going to the Earth time. And so it, it's just like, if I want an instant answer, that's not the way to do it. Okay. Yeah, so the, sharing the time is more important than being correct, I'd say.
We'll talk later. Thank you, sir. Dark background. Put this in here. Thank you very much. Go up. And what is advanced? It's okay. Yeah. You just go. Yeah. If you just go up. Yeah. Perfect. No, I think download on the front end. There you go. Great. Thank you. Oh, no, that's not me. Oh, sorry. We have the wrong Chris. <laughs> <laughs> what, what Chris was it? <laughs> we can do slight karaoke where we just give you random slides and you're going to present on them. <sighs> What's the title of it? Um, what is it? Mapping and Shaping Lunar, the Lunar Legal Plans. Here. There we go. Yeah. Okay.